Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Creator of all, we ask your presence here this morning with your infinite grace and your immeasurable mercy. Father, we ask each heart that's here to receive a blessing in some way or other. And as we depart this place, we ask your hand upon us to keep us safe, that we can return again at the appointed time. Father, we're so thankful for the many things that you've given us and done for us. We can only ask forgiveness for our trespasses and allow us the unction to forgive others that trespass against us. Father, again, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning again. Good to see all y'all here this morning. Uh, I got up this morning, got ready to come to church, and I put this jacket on and I felt in the pockets. Well, I got a monkey in the right pocket. I got a bear in the left pocket. That's something I carved from peach seeds. But it put me to wondering. With a, with a monkey in the right pocket and a bear in the left pocket, what's in the middle? Have I truly got Jesus in the middle? I'm working that way. But this morning, I want to speak a little bit about adversity. And I know there's several in here and others that I know of that have faced adversity in the past week or so. But if you'll picture in your mind this scene, and I know it's happened to a lot of us, it's happened to me before. But you've been to church or somewhere and you heard an uplifting message. And after church is over with, you go out the door and you're happy. Boy, you just want to shout and sing. Well, let it rip. Let her go. But you're going, you got on your mind going to your favorite place to eat. And then all of a sudden, boom, you hit a pothole. Your old left front tire goes pop. And then it goes wop, pop, pop, pop. Well, about the time you find a place to stop, you hear this. Splat, 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 splat. It starts to rain. Well, what's the first thing you say? You got your new shoes on. You got your best suit on. You know you're fixing to get wet. What do you say? What's your response? Like I said, you know you're going to get that, that best suit wet. And them new shoes, you're going to get wet. But what is the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Because what comes out of your mouth is what comes out of your heart. Now, you may, you may say something that can't be repeated in a lot of places. And you may say, why me, Lord? Why now? What have I done to deserve this? That's questions you ask. That's an adverse situation, right? I heard this morning that one of the guys here had a little uplifting thing with a tractor. Got the bruise to show it. Is that an adverse situation? <laughs> yes, it is. 
I got one question though, did you damage the tractor? <laughs> but uh, I don't care who you are, where you are, or, or anything, you're going to have an adverse situation in your life. If you don't, you better find out what's wrong. Oh, but now, if you stop and think, there's an old farmer out there, he's been to church, he's a little country church, and he's gone home and changed his clothes because he's got to go out to the barn to do something. And he's, he's walking towards the barn, and that raindrop starts hitting him. He calls his family outside. Hey, y'all come out here, it's raining. They're out there shouting and singing in the rain because he knows that it's going to end the drought. It's going to make everything fresh again. And how many times have y'all seen it just get just nasty, dusty everywhere and you get a good rain and everything looks brand new and fresh? Uplifted. But now what causes these adversities? Well, is it man's sin? I'm not leaving you ladies out either. But is it, is it because we sin? Are we disobeying God's laws? Are we not being fully focused on the situation at hand? But what are some of the sins? Do you, are you thinking yourself better than those less fortunate? I mean, I stand up here in a suit, but I can guarantee you if I'd come in that door this morning with a dirty pants, barefooted, and a torn shirt on, how would I have been received? Are you critical of someone's attire? That's simple. Reminds me of a joke I heard one time. A man and woman had been to church. And they left, were going wherever. The lady looked over her husband and said, Did you see that dress Kate had on, how short it was? He said, No. She said, well, did you see that guy with the tobacco stains on the front of his shirt? No. Did you hear what Myrtle said to, to Joanne? No. She said, it did you a lot of good to go to church, didn't it? <laughs> but are we being judgmental toward others? That's another sin. But now I got a question. Does adversity have a purpose? I think every adverse situation has a purpose. In 2 Samuel 12, 9 through 12, and I left my Bible on the seat, excuse me. In 2 Samuel 12, 9 through 12, these adverse situations, are they for punishment? It says in, in verse 9, Wherein hast thou de despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now this is when uh, David had committed that horrible sin with Bathsheba and against Uriah. Murder and rape. But then here comes Nathan and brings it home. Now, that is more or less telling David what his punishment's going to be. 
Oh, that's the way I interpret it. Oh, but now, in 2 Chronicles 33, verse 12, is it to humble us? This is when, this is when Manasseh was captured and carried to Babylon in chains. And it says, and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Now, when we have an ad adverse situation, do we, are we humble enough to admit or say in our, in our minds, thank you, Lord, for teaching me this. Now, if we go to Hebrews 12, excuse me, Hebrews 12, 5 through 11, is it to chasten us? And it says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So, maybe, maybe he's got this adverse situation to chasten us. But now if you go to 1 Peter 1, 5 through 8, it says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, is that a test of faith? I think it is. Now in Psalms 94, Verses 12 and 13, is this, this is, a te, is, is he giving us an adverse situation to test our faith? If you go to uh, Psalm 94, verse 13, 12 and 13, it says, Blessed is the man who thou chasteneth, O Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. I think that pretty well explains it. Now, excuse me. That is giving us rest. Our final rest would be whether we've lived right and go to the grave or whether we've, I mean, whether we live wrong and go to the grave or whether we live right and go to heaven. Now, some of our reactions to adversity are we rebellious about it? As Job's wife was in Job 2, verse 9. That's when Job's wife came to Job after he had lost everything. And she said to him, curse God and die. That's quite rebellious. Or do we take an adverse situation and complain as Ruth did in, in Ruth 1, 20 and 21. And we don't have to go there if we don't want to. But are we arrogant when we have face a diverse, an adverse situation? As a description of the wicked man in Psalms 10, 6, that's a very arrogant attitude from that young man. Or do we take an adverse situation 
and submit to it as a reason for chastisement, correction, punishment, or whatever. If you, if you read Job, if you read Job 5, 17 to 22, that is a very submissive, very submissive attitude. Or in, if it, it, a joyful attitude <clears throat> will be explained in, in James 1, 2, 2 through 4. Now, I know in my past, if I was going somewhere, <clears throat> had a blowout, it was raining, the air around me had turned blue. That don't happen anymore. If I leave here today and start somewhere, wherever Sue wants to go, have a blowout, you notice I am submissive. <laughs> but if I have a blowout, oh well, I got to change tire. So what? But if you ask yourself, why is it always me? It ain't always you. You're not the only person in this world. You might ask yourself, why am I the only one affected? You're not the only one affected because when you get all grouchy and, and out of sorts, everybody around you is going to be affected by it. If you face adversity, be joyful. Look for the reason behind it. What can you do about adversity? Cut your finger, that's a little bit adverse situation. Put a Band-Aid on it and keep trucking. Change the flat tire, keep rolling. Now, the last thing is, who can I call on in these times? Well, you don't get on the phone and call Aunt Annie. You don't get on the computer and you text a message to Joanne. Who can you call on? Get on your knees Put, it on, put your complaint to the Lord. He will take care of it. I don't care how bad the situation is. You put it in His hands. He'll take care of it. I read a thing one time said that uh, smooth water don't make a good sailor. And it said it went on to say that don't matter about the wind, it's how you set your sails. If you're in adverse winds, set your sails right. Now as we've gone over this message this morning, and I've I've told you that it's not always you that has adverse situation. I mean, I, I leave here today. God forbid I may have total out Sue's new car. Hope not. I hope none of y'all have that trouble. But Jesus' word said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the ends of the world. If you'll take your trouble to the Lord in prayer and trust in Him to lead you through troubling times, no amount of worry on your part can help. I've been living with a worry for 54 years. She's the one that worries in our family. Something comes up, okay. But now I'll tell you this much. I had a school that I had to go to with MDOT 
and I think I've told you this before, it had equations in it. But when I went to school in math, it was two and two was four, and four and four was eight. It wasn't none of this Y equals A and, and, and Z equals U or nothing like that. I mean, I, some people can have no trouble with it. But I walked the floor till about two o'clock, worried about that. When I went in there to go to bed, I said, Lord, it's in your hands. Guess what? Next day I went down and aced that test. He'll stand with you. I don't care what the problem is. But all of your worrying ain't going to get you nowhere. It'll make you lose sleep. It'll make you say things to your friends you shouldn't. But in fervent prayer to the Lord, all the big stuff becomes small stuff. In other words, don't tell God how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big your God is. And let Him handle it. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of standing in your pulpit this morning. Thank you for the blessings that you bestowed on us through the life, through this life. And Father, we ask that if there's anyone here that needs you, let them realize the path to righteousness. Father God, thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen.